Richard sets out in search of adventure, but finds that the beach is not what it seems. Paradise comes at a price. Wait, isn't Brennan... Is this based off Bones? Or is Bones the author who inspired hit TV show Bones? Okay, that makes sense. So this was before Bones. part two. The first part I showed you the books I got for the kids, the records I got to trace on my No Talking channel, and some really, really old magazines from the 50s. Um, and then also some more magazines from the, from 1917 to 19. So it ended up being really long, so I thought I would keep just this part, since books are quite relaxing. And that way I can take my time and have a look at the covers and read the blurbs on the back and stuff. So basically it is like a big thrift store or a charity shop if you will um, called Emos and there is a huge book section and in that section there is like a, a section for English books because I'm in France so I don't have a huge selection of books to pick from but enough for just me, for little old me, it's perfect. So, I just got these <laughs> and I will show you them all one by one, but first I'm just going to spend a few minutes just tapping and scratching and tracing on the spines and the covers maybe and stuff like that. So, if you want to just see me talk about each individual book, feel free Skip ahead, timestamps are down below. Otherwise, enjoy.
so that was actually really relaxing and pretty nice so I think I might have to do a no talking video for my no talking channel like this too so I don't really have a specific plan or order for these so I'm just gonna go through them one by one um, not even alphabetic I'm literally just gonna put a pile beside me and go through them one by one let's go so this first one is Outlander um, I've never read any of the Outlander books, but I have seen the series and I do love it. <laughs> if you've never seen or read the books or seen the series, it is based in Scotland and it is um, kind of like a time travel -y in the past, in the future kind of um, story. <laughs> Um, yeah, and it's a really long, um, s like, series, and I think it's a really long book, series of books, so I'm really happy about that. Anything where you can just kind of keep going and keep going, and, you know, there's always a new book, and, you know, the next part to go to and stuff, I love that. And Outlander is a pretty intense story. Author of the multi-million best-selling Outlander series. Now a major TV series. I hope I got the first one. I think this is the first one. I really hope. That was the only one that was there. Well, that I knew was an Outlander one. Maybe there were others and I didn't notice. Oh, I thought they would have all said Outlander, but maybe it's only the first one. I need to look again. Oh, I can actually look at the footage. Um, which is cool because I can kind of check which books I didn't get and if there are any that are good let me know if there are any that are good go check the footage um, pause it the the English book part is at the very end so if you pause it on there and have a look through the titles uh, see if there's anything you would recommend in there that would be cool all oh, the other ones are on the back cool yeah they're not called Outlander of course they're not it's just the name of the series because the first one Dragonfly in Amber, Voyager, Drums of Autumn, The Fire Cross, A Breath of Snow, and Shays? Ashes. <laughs> I didn't see the A. Okay. So, the first snowball in the best selling Outlander series. Okay. So, when I was there, maybe I read that and it was okay. Let's zoom in a little. So, there we go. What? If your future was the past. 1946, Claire Randall goes to the Scottish Highlands with her husband Frank. It's a second honeymoon, a chance to learn how war has changed them and to re-establish their loving marriage. Claire was a nurse in the war. But one afternoon, Claire walks through a circle of standing stones and vanishes into 1743, where the first person she meets is a British army officer, her husband's six times great-grandfather. They're identical. Same actor, obviously, in the series. <laughs> Unfortunately, Black Jack Randall is not the man his descendant is. And while trying to escape him, Claire falls into the hands of a gang of Scottish outlaws. I just smiled. <laughs> and finds herself a Sassnack, the Outlander, because she's English, in danger from both Jacobites and Redcoats. Reminds me of school, <laughs> talking about Jacobites and Redcoats. Um, I'm Scottish, by the way. I grew up in the Scottish Highlands and I live. Marooned amid danger, passion, and violence, her only chance of safety lies in Jamie Fraser. Smiled again. A gallant young Scots warrior, what begins in compulsion becomes urgent need, and Claire finds herself torn between two very different men in two irreconcilable lives. Irreconcilable lives. Let's 
something about the series and the, the author. Tiny synopsis of um, the next books. To the memory of my mother who taught me to read Jacqueline Sykes. <laughs> um, Gabaldon, sorry. <laughs> I just love it myself because I like psych. Like it's a joke. <laughs> sorry. Okay, acknowledgement. Part 1 Inverness, 1946. I used to go to Inverness when I was a teenager at the weekend to be cool with my friends because <laughs> it's like the big town it's the city for me a new beginning I don't know if I'll really read into the books there are maybe a little too many of them but yeah, that's a, a pretty happy I'm pretty happy about it so this one says 3 euros but I'm pretty sure I got them all for 2 each I could check. There's like a sign there telling you how much the books were and stuff, but I don't know if she um, was looking at the books here, like inside the books, or she just counted them as books like normal, you know. I didn't really notice. It wasn't very expensive, so I was pretty happy and I didn't really want to look too much into it and be like, hey, this one, you know, it's, it's a place where I don't really I'm not really interested in haggling. It's kind of to help people out and stuff. Everything is donated. I don't really feel... I mean, I see people haggling there and I just feel uncomfortable. I don't know. Maybe it's the thing to do, but I don't like it. So this next one is also um, an author that I recognize. Well, actually the last author I didn't recognize, just the series because of the TV series. And Dan Brown, I recognize the author of The Da Vinci Code, of course. Um, which I haven't read. I've only seen the film and this one also I have not read. I think I've never read any of Dan Brown's books. Angels and Demons, the first Robert Langdon thriller. So at first I was like, oh maybe I shouldn't get it in case it's like the sequel of something that I'm just not aware of. I didn't really have time to look up on my phone and stuff because I was filming at the time. So I just thought, you know what, it says the first I decided it was okay. So, Dan Brown. I don't really know much about them. Let's have a little read in the back. My filming room is still a little dusty from those magazines. Okay. A breathless real-time adventure. Exciting, fast-paced, an unusually high IQ. What, the story has an unusually high IQ? Mm. Okay. When a world-renowned scientist is found brutally murdered, a Harvard professor, Robert Langdon, is summoned to identify the mysterious symbol seared onto the dead man's chest. His conclusion, it is the work of the Illuminati. A secret brotherhood presumed extinct for nearly 400 years. Now reborn to continue their bitter vendetta. Vendetta? No. Vendetta against their sworn enemy, the Catholic Church. Da, da, da. Okay. In Rome, the College of Cardinals assembles to elect a new pope. Yet somewhere within the walls of the Vatican, an unstoppable bomb of terrifying power relentlessly counts down to oblivion. While the minutes tick away, Langdon joins forces with Vittoria Vetra, a beautiful and mysterious Italian scientist, to decipher the labyrinth trail of ancient symbols that snakes across Rome the long-forgotten Illuminati lair, a secret refuge wherein lies the only hope for the Vatican. But 
with each revelation comes another twist, another turn in the plot, which leaves Langdon and Vetra reeling and at the mercy of a seemingly invincible enemy. It's intense. I mean, <laughs> and no holes barred, pull out all the stops, breathless tangle of a thriller, a hick of a good read. Amazon.com. <laughs> okay, so that sounds pretty fun. I think it's going to be one of those books that you just, just go, like, breeze through, you know. I wonder if I should read The Da Vinci Code first. Does anybody know if that's important? I don't think so. Anyway. This next one is a book that I have already read, but I read it when I was like, um, in my late teens, early twenties, late teens, um, it was, yes, a major film with Leonardo DiCaprio. And if I remember correctly, it's kind of like a early twenties kind of Lord of the Flies kind of story. I can't remember exactly, but it was kind of like that, you know. People making up their own rules and laws and stuff. An island, the beach. It was a very good film, very popular. The international cult bestseller, now a major film from 20th Century Fox, and the makers of Train Spotting, starring Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, there are actually photos from the film, like stills from the film, I think. film again. If I remember correctly, I probably saw the film first and then read the book, but I couldn't be sure. Bangkok, first stop on the backpacker trail. On Richard's first night in a hostel, a mysterious traveller slits his own wrists, leaving Richard a map to the beach. The beach is a legend among young travellers in Thailand, a secret island of paradise where a select community lives in blissful isolation. Richard sets out in search of adventure, but finds that the beach is not what it seems. Paradise comes at a price. Yeah. Pretty good. I would recommend. Okay. Let's see what we have next. So this is the one I probably know the least about. Um, but on the front it says, if you like Bones, you'll love Thyros. And I do like Bones. What's the series? Bones. <laughs> so, Tori Brennan's first gripping adventure. 25% off. Oh, I didn't look at the prices. This one doesn't have a price. Yeah, the others don't either. Only the Outlander one had a price in it. Okay, Kathy Reich's Virals. And James Patterson thinks so. forensic action with a legal twist. Tori Brennan is a... Wait, isn't Brennan... Is this based off Bones? Or is Bones the author who inspired hit TV show Bones? Okay, that makes sense. So this was before Bones. <laughs> okay, hard to read. Okay, Tori Brennan is as fascinated by Bones and dead bodies as her famous aunt, forensic anthropologist Tempe Brennan. Okay, so it's the niece of the star from Bones. However, living on a secluded island off Charleston in South Carolina, she does not have as much opportunity to put her knowledge to the test until she and her group of technophile friends stumble across a shallow grave containing the remains of a girl who has been missing for over a with the cold case murder suddenly hot, Tori yes, the girl, realizes that they are involved in something fatally dangerous 
on the run from forces they don't understand. She and her friends have only themselves to fall back on. It soon becomes clear that the island is home to a secret that has driven men to kill once and will drive them to kill again. Okay, I hope it's not too creepy. I don't like horror-y kind of things. <laughs> okay, Kathy Rikes takes forensics to a whole new level. Let's really just hope that it's not too This next one is definitely not too creepy for me. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, this is huge nostalgia for me. Red Dwarf is a series in the UK from my childhood, I guess the 90s. Um, series of books and a, a TV series, which I loved. Loved, loved, loved when I was a kid and a teenager. Okay, Grant Naylor, Red Dwarf and Better Than Life, now in one enormous volume. Red Dwarf. I still have the DVDs to probably most of the series. Omnibus. <laughs> With unmissable new material. Red Dwarf and Better Than Life, the two best-selling Red Dwarf novels together for the first time in one volume. The prologue, the sequel, the story, the explanation. The human race began as slime and ended as slime. <laughs> his name was Lister. Celebrating his 24th birthday on a Monopoly board pub crawl around London. He ended up three million years from Earth, marooned in the wrong plane, of the wrong dimension, of the wrong reality, and down to his last two cigarettes. Together with a dead man, a hologram I guess, a senile computer, Holly, <laughs> a deranged sanitation mechanoid with an overactive And the best dressed in type and the best dressed entity, sorry, in all six known universes, cat. The last remaining member of the human race begins his epic journey home. A journey that will take him two lifetimes. On the way he'll break the light barrier, meet Einstein, God, and Elvis, shoot pool with planet, battle emotion stealing chameleonic mutant parasites and play reality's ultimate game. Oh, it up there, sorry. Contains new material. Including the first draft of the TV pilot script and the beer mat on which the original idea was first scribbled. 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 See the beer mat? Where is it? Is it in the back? Go beat the beer mat. Can't see it. Maybe it came with it or something. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty excited about that. That'd be a nice little nostalgic read. And this next one is also one where I have already seen the film. I haven't read it, but I've seen the film. Um, based on the recently discovered diaries of Lionel Logue, The King's Speech. Well, that's kind of a bit different now that we actually have a king now. Well, the UK does. Let me have a difference. How One Man Saved the British Monarchy. Mark Logue and Peter Conradi. It's a nice film. I mean, I just got this because I was like, oh, I've seen the film. It was quite good. I might as well grab this too. Feels like there's photos or something. Yeah, there are photos in here. Different. There's the speech. Some letters, telegrams, things like that. Okay, so 
So, I mean, I'm less excited about this book. It's more just, it was there, it's in English. Why not? You might as well. And it's not a huge book, too. So, it's fine. One man saved the British royal family in the first decades of the 20th century. He wasn't a prime minister or an archbishop of Canterbury. He was an almost unknown and self-taught speech therapist named Lionel Lowe whom one newspaper in the 1930s famously dubbed the quack who saved the king. Logue wasn't a British aristocrat or even an Englishman. He was a commoner and an Australian to boot. Nevertheless, it was the outgoing, amiable Logue who single-handedly turned the nervous, tongue-tied Duke of York into one of Britain's greatest kings after his brother, King Edward VIII, abdicated in 1936 over his love of Mrs. Simpson. This is the previously untold story of the remarkable relationship between Logue and the haunted future king George VI. Written with Logue's grandson and drawing exclusively from his father, from his grandfather Lionel's diaries and archive, it throws an extraordinary light on the intimacy of the two men and the vital role the king's wife, the late Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother, played in bringing them together to save her husband's reputation and reign. Yeah, I mean, I'm not huge on royalty, but this next one is actually some, it's like a book I've seen here and there for a long time and I feel like it's a really well-known and well-liked book. I just never grabbed it, so I feel like it's a classic. The number one bestseller, The Lovely Bones, compulsive enough to read in a single sitting, brilliantly intelligent, elegantly constructed and ultimately intriguing. Bold. I feel like it's not a very happy story though. Like, my name was Salmon, or Salmon, like the fish. First name is Susie, Susie Salmon. And I was 14 when I was murdered on December 6, 1973. Yeah, it's not, not a nice one. My murder was a man from our neighborhood. My mother liked his border flowers and my father talked to him once about fertilizer. This is Susie Salmon, speaking from heaven, which looks a lot like her school playground, with the good kind of swing set. Counselors to help newcomers adjust, and friends to room with. Everything Susie wants appears as soon as she thinks of it except the one thing she wants the most, to be back with the people she left on Earth. Okay, this is very sad, actually. Hopefully it's not too heavy. I feel like I want it to be a little light-hearted in there, but... Watching from her place in heaven, Susie sees her happy suburban family devastated by her death, isolated even from one another, as they each try to cope with their terrible loss alone. Over the years, her friends and siblings grow up, fall in love, do all the things she never had the chance to do herself. But life is not quite finished with Susie yet. Okay, I like the last phrase there. <laughs> Hopefully there's something. Moving and compelling. Transfixed. Graceful. Imagination. Okay. Hopeful and redemptive. So taking tragedy and making it hopeful. Let's let's hope. Let's hope it's hopeful. I hope it's hopeful. Okay, I still have one more book to share with you guys. So this last one is a divergent, which I feel oh, it's a film. Okay, I've never seen the film. I think it's a series of books. I think there are three maybe. Um and this is number one, hopefully. <laughs> It seems to be... yeah, there are two others. Um, 
is it like a teenagery type thing? I don't know. Um, let me just read a little about it. She turns to face the future in a world that's falling apart. Divergent, a major, a major motion picture in 2014. Veronica Roth, New York Times bestseller. Three flying birds, one for each member of the family I left behind. 16-year-old Triss is forced to make a terrible choice in a divided society where everyone must conform. Triss does not fit, so she ventures out alone, determined to discover where she truly belongs. Shocked by her brutal new life, Triss can trust no one, and yet she is drawn to a boy who seems both, who seems to both threaten and protect her. The hardest choices, the hardest choice lies ahead. Okay, it's getting late. I may need a speech therapist. Get me through <laughs> these blurbs tonight. Okay, so I mean, I feel like they're known, but I haven't seen the film Divergent. So I'm wondering if it's like a teenager kind of thing, or I just missed it. I, I really don't know. I guess I'll just read it and find out. Okay, so they are all the books I have to show you for this evening. I'm very happy about it. I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess 16 year olds for eight. Pretty good. Pretty good. I hope that you all enjoy this video, that you found it relaxing, a little interesting to see the books I got. Let me know if you liked any of them. It might help me decide which order to read them in. I have plenty of books to read right now, but still, I have like a little list. So hopefully I will have a lot, a lot, lot more of um, thrifting hauls coming in this year. So excited about it. <laughs> I don't know how many books I'll be getting because I'm only one person. I don't need to read everything. I can't. <laughs> don't have time. But yeah. And I don't see a lot of resale value. I hope that every single one of my sleepy squirrels are well, wherever you are in the world, whatever's happening around you. I hope that you can find your own little bubble of gum. For example, if you are in Edmonton, Alberta in Canada, like Amy Byrne. Hey Amy, it will be well. And I hope that you all have a lovely, lovely, lovely evening. And I'll see you